Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. In today's video, we have another PlayStation 5, which has a no power issue. So this PlayStation 5, let's give it some power and see what it does when we try to power it on. Click the power button, you get a beep, you get a blue light and then power off again so this is a one second blue light of death power issue on this playstation 5 so let's uh, get it opened up and see what we find good news this one hasn't been opened yet Right, so with our multimeter on the screen, let's do our usual checks. Let's add some power back in and just check some of our standby voltages. So black probe anywhere on ground, so anywhere on the copper that you see. And then we'll just go along and just check. First of all, check if we've got 12 volts. So check down here, do we have 12 volts? Yes, we do do which is good so you can check there on the left hand pin down here this is where the power supply uh, brings in the power onto the motherboard up here there's a transistor this top one up here if we do the first leg of this top one it should be five volts yep we've got five volts which is good now there's three transistors in a diagonal line the bottom transistor the first leg on the bottom transistor should be 3.3 volts yes it is good over here we have got a fuse which is f7002 either side of that should be 5 volts which it is so that's good news as well so we've got 5 got 3.3 .3. And then we can quickly just have a quick look around these other areas around here just to see if we've got any other voltages. We should get a reading there of five volts, which we do, which is good. So we're getting all of our normal standby voltages, which is perfect. So we need to dig a little bit deeper. So let's get the motherboard out and see what else we can find. <laughs> So with our motherboard out, quick visual inspection of the board. You can, I don't know if it comes up on camera, but you can see like a darker uh, kind of shadow to the motherboard around here. Now that normally means there's been quite a lot of heat onto the motherboard. Now that ne not, is not necessarily the fault, uh, but it's just something to kind of be mindful of. Um, everything looks like I can't see any ICs which have blown up but obviously we'll be able to tell a little bit more once we get under the microscope all the ports look fine as well on the rear of the motherboard again everything looks as it should do so do a quick probe around the motherboard. We'll do this on the overhead camera first of all. Let's just put our multimeter into continuity mode, which is the mode that beeps when you touch the probes together. But what we're going to do is put one of our probes on ground like that, and then we're just going to check around some of the power supplies. Okay, so obviously on any, any motherboard, not just PS5s, you have uh, different power supplies. You have your 3.3s we saw earlier, we have our 5 volts as we saw earlier, uh, and all of those are produced around the board. Normally where you see these coils, they're a power supply. Right, so up here is the 5 volt circuit. If we put our probe next to that, if it doesn't beep, that means we know we've got a good 5 volt circuit. Right, we know that already because we saw the 5 volts on the other side when we measured that, so no beep there, which is good. Down here is another power supply. 
This is one of the 12 volt power supplies. Again, when we beep, uh, when, sorry, when we touch our probes on either side of these capacitors here, for example, one side should beep because that's ground. The other side shouldn't beep. Down here is quite a common place for um, one of the capacitors to blow along this low, uh, four capacitors here. Uh, but we're actually good on this motherboard. All right, good here. Good all around. Another place where we actually see quite often is power to the USB ports. So there's five volts that go to these USB ports. After the five volts produced, it comes through here. And sometimes these can short. But on this motherboard, we haven't got that problem because only one side of the caps is beeping, right? So we know those circuits for the uh, USB power is good. So we just go around and probe some of the other power supplies, the caps on those, and just make sure that they only beep one side, right? Which all of these are doing, right? So only beep one side, which is good. Check that one, that's good. We know that's good. All of these are good. So next thing to check is our Wi-Fi circuit up here. So another common area is one of the, either the Wi-Fi chip, which is on the other side of the board, or one of these capacitors, they blow. But again, just check either side of the capacitor. One side should beep, the other side shouldn't beep. So these ones are good. Yeah, yeah, all good, right? So we haven't got a problem with our Wi-Fi chip either. Um, next thing is to check is the fuses, right? As you can see, anywhere that's marked F something on the motherboard, right? So this one here is F7003. The capacitor is just these tiny little components there. Just check that. This should beep now because it's a fuse, right? So we want to make sure that it is making the full contact all the way through. So uh, that one's good. There's a couple of markings up here. This is a digital uh, edition, so it won't actually have the circuits because that's the circuit for the disk drive. So obviously this uh, this is the digital, it doesn't come with the disk drive, so there'll be no components up here to check. Uh, down here, we have another fuse, All right? So we just check that, just make sure that beeps because it should now beep because we're checking fuses. Another one down here. Yep, those, those fuses are good. Right, so should check this one up here, which will be good because that's the five volt one. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so all of our power supplies look good. We don't have any, um, any, any shorts. Well, we don't think we've got many shorts on the board anywhere. Uh, we can check this side of the motherboard for some shorts as well. Again, Exactly the same process, just check some capacitors around here. All good. That's the Wi-Fi chip I was talking about earlier. Uh, be wary, some areas will be right either side of the capacitors. That's because there is a very low resistance to the APU. So for example, if you're checking these power supplies here, they are going to beep, right? Now that doesn't mean there's a short there. That means it's just a very low resistance. It's a pull down resistance for when the uh, when the motherboard is powered off. This is the same for PS5, laptops, etc. Uh, to protect the APU against static and things like that, it will short it to ground when it's powered off, right? So any uh, interference from static, etc., will go through ground and not through the processor. So that is on purpose. So. If you see it beep like this, you haven't necessarily got a short there. You might have, right? And this is where it gets a bit tricky. You might have a short, but not necessarily um, because it should be quite low resistance. See, I'm getting two ohms and that is round about correct. Um, so next thing to do is what I like to do is use a thing called UART, right? Um, we know uh, that the circuits are good. Let's just check this fuse down here quickly. If I missed that one. Okay, that fuse is good. Um, we know that uh, the the the, uh, the fuses are good. We know that the power circuits look to be good. Doesn't necessarily mean they will be, but look to be good. So there's a thing called UART. You've seen other videos about this where you can basically hook up your uh, motherboard through this header here. Uh, to your laptop or PC and it gives you some error codes to tell you where the actual error lies with the actual on the actual motherboard itself So let's get that hooked up now and see what our codes are Right, so with our UART hooked up uh, We actually had a load of error codes. We cleared those off uh, and then um, Plugged everything back in again 
uh, minus the LED cable, uh, recycled the power, uh, and then read the error codes again, and we got no error codes, which is actually quite uncommon. You normally see some kind of error codes with these beep on beep off type issues. But what was the different thing that we did? We didn't plug in the LED cable, right? So now, if I plug everything back in uh, uh, with the HDMI port and everything, and then power, power the console on without a ribbon cable, uh, the, the sorry LED ribbon cable, it actually powers up and displays, right? It actually does go to a white light, where well, it would go to white light if I could have the um, LED uh, ribbon cable plugged in. I have seen this a few times before, and it's normally when there's damage on the actual ribbon cable, right? Now, this is a bit of a weird one because the actual ribbon cable is not damaged in any way, right? Because obviously we know the console hasn't been opened previously. So it probably is something actually on this PCB board, right? Which, got, which uh, hold, holds the LEDs, which then produce the lights through this light bar. It's probably an issue with that, right? So it's trying to boot up. It gets push, pushes the power to the uh, LED board here and then shuts down the console. So quite a rare one, this admittedly, uh, but I have seen it probably two or three times before, where it's literally this LED board, or there's some kind of fault with the cable, which is causing the PS5 to uh, have the blue lights, the, the quick blue, blue light issue. Um, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna replace this LED uh, cable uh, and obviously the LED board, the ribbon cable and the LED board as well. Get that replaced, give everything a good clean up. So just quickly, before we put everything back together again, I've got a spare LED ribbon cable and LED board here. So let's plug that in. All right, and then watch this board here. Let me give it some power. We get the blue light. This time it's not going off. And then eventually, what we're going to see is a white light. Right, you still see the blue lights. It's pretty dim on this board. So I think you can see that. And then there it goes, eventually to a white light. Okay. So we'll just power this off. Um, but essentially, this board here, the original, is the problem. So let's get this swapped out with another spare that I've got and uh, give everything a good test. Right, that's everything put back together. We've got some power and HDMI, and we know this is gonna work. So let's hit the power button. See it beeps, got the blue lights, and then it should go to a white light. It's just booting up now. There we go, got video output. Just giving itself a quick rebuild. And there we go, got white light. So thanks very much for watching the video. Hope it was useful. That kind of fault is quite rare, right? So as, as I say, I've only had it once or twice where the actual ribbon cable or the actual LED PCB is causing that issue, but it does happen, right? So, you know, when you get a, a blue light of death, you know, an on off issue with your PlayStation, don't always jump to the conclusion that it's gonna be the worst case scenario, that it's gonna be the APU or it's gonna be a RAM chip. It might be something as simple as the little LED bar, right, which is causing the issue. So anyhow, as I say, thanks very much for watching. Hope it was useful. If it was, please consider giving us a thumbs up. That really does help us out. And please consider subscribing to the channel. It costs you absolutely nothing. It's completely free for you, but it really does help us out. 
Once again, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next week for the next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye for now.